for some digging that they were going to do up there. Um, also on the 18th, he cleaned out the outfall of uh, some uh, weeds and small trees and things. Uh, 19th, uh, we had an alarm with a power outage. Uh, the UV system kicked out. He went up and reset that. On the 21st of August, we had a red light at the Windermere Cottage, and we had a float tangled up, and he adjusted the float. Uh, took us up to the 29th, we mowed the weed whipped, and then we sprayed some of the cells uh, a few times, and the last thing we had on September 8th was another power outage that was this past Saturday here with the uh, uh, had to go out and check out the plant to reset it. Uh, the generator kicked out and UV kicked out. We also had the same thing in the village, so it wasn't about unusual. Um, we typed up a little report from the board from the from Wayne and I. Um, as of 9-11 today, uh, Toby has completed 96 electrical upgrades um, up at Quad Lake and we have about eight that we're going to have to dig and replace the conduits up there. That, uh, and then we uh, have about 15 left to do. So Dewey was asking about that number yesterday. I thought it was a little bit higher. I thought it was around 25, it was only 15. So yeah. we're in pretty good shape up there. And Toby's going to start getting up there next week. Now the folks have left, and he's going to start knocking those 15 off, get that done. So he will be done by this fall with all, all the electrical upgrades. Um, during the electrical upgrades, we found that there was about six pumps that were bad, so we were able to replace those pumps before the folks got up there and got busy, the lake got busy, and then while the lake was in session, we did our usual three or four, I think we replaced four, so we replaced a total of ten pumps, so that was pretty good. Um, as a result of the upgrade, the call volume has dropped to hardly anything throughout this whole summer month. You can see by our reports there's less and less activity because of all the work that Toby did on the uh, electrical boxes. Uh, we have replaced several covers at the different locations. Uh, those are those concrete covers. We, we found them actually over at Binghamton Precast. Uh, they were only $32 a piece. They had the built-in handles that are identical to what were put in when the, the uh, lake system was first put in there. So we bought uh, some of them, and uh, Dewey has suggested, uh, give us a good suggestion that what we'll do is start getting some and put them on the truck, and every time we go to the location, if we see they're bad, we'll change them home. So that's, that's a good idea. So we're going to pick up some more of those. So at 32 bucks a piece, that was, uh, that was good. Um, we just want the board to begin thinking about some of the pl plumbing issues that we're having up there. We have three or four, I think one is a 102 uh, Hanson, um, three or four places that when the pumps are turned on, there's a, uh, a lot of back pressure. If everybody is at the lake using it, they're all trying to pump through that two-inch line, doing a lot of rambling and stuff. So we're, we're thinking about trying to, and maybe it's a good question for uh, the engineers at some point to decide, you know, what we can do to straighten that out because we're breaking a lot of pipes up there. We're using schedule weight and pipe, which is a lot heavier, but it's still, it's just so much pressure on the pumps, you know, they're just running and running and it's, it's not going anywhere until everything gets caught up. And uh, we've had two or three calls where we've had to go up there and replace some plumbing. So we want to look at that in the future and see if we can come up with some ideas. <coughs> also in the spring, what we had, did, did get to this year because the village has been so busy with uh, putting in meters and stuff is that we want to get some of those uh, manholes out on, the, out on the road, get them opened up so we can do some camera work. And we hope to do that in the spring with JD and his crew and we'll all get together and see if we can get those opened up. But we just kind of got really far behind and I lost a couple of guys, so I'm sure I ended. So. Um, we're still on, trying to uh, schedule a solid state pumping with Dick at, uh, at Scott's main tank. Dewey and I talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, so I think by next week we're going to just get a hold of Dick and we're going to go up there and get that done. Uh, JD was nice enough to send up his guys and they made a nice 14 foot road back in there. Uh, Wayne went up and worked with them and they, they cleaned out all around the tanks. Uh, they even cut some overhead trees and things like that and cleaned it all up. And uh, so we got to go take up there and get that home. And 
that's really about the last thing that I do for And after you get past that first page, um, basically what it is is uh, all of the residents that we have completed the electrical upgrades on. We've got about three pages of full there of all of the addresses. So if anybody has any other questions for me, I, I think that's about all I have for the board tonight. Any questions? Sounds good. I did speak with Bill Maines yesterday. I haven't seen him on the side of the road and stopped with chatting with him. <coughs> he was sitting there. He had been at the uh, meeting there and he said that they were extremely happy with everything the village has done in uh, Thomas Sanford and real happy with the way everything is running up there. So that was good news.
has been coming at $41,300. Um, as you can see, everything is there. Uh, I think we need to make a resolution for a couple of small little things that were into the bids there that would make the prices go up even more. Uh, for instance, the membership card for the Builders Association. Basically, you've got to pay up for a car to be a member of the Builders Association, which if these guys have done this, uh, it's going to raise the bids even more. Uh, basically, I think these guys have been in business for many, many years. You go back in the references, uh, instead of having to go buy one of these cars to say they're a member, I think we ought to make a resolution on that. Um, and uh, there's a couple little other things. For instance, uh, the bid check was not a certified check. But it's a, a business check that we have received for it, and also uh, the corporate non conclusion resolution did not include the meeting. Gave the Berkeley submitted a bit of non conclusive statement. So I think we're making the resolution on that uh, at this point. I'll have Allison take this over. Um, ask the board to um, accept resolution awarding Town Highway Salt Storage Building contract to lowest responsible bidder. Would you, uh, <clears throat> would you want to read that resolution? Yeah. Whereas the highway superintendent of the town of Sanford has solicited sealed competitive bids for construction of a salt storage building for the town, said bids being returnable to the town clerk's office by 2 p.m. on September 6, 2012, to be publicly, publicly opened and read at the same date and time. And whereas Bertley and Sun Building and Ex Excavation LLC duly submitted such a bid at the same time, or said time and place in the amount of $41,300. And CB Structures Doubletree duly submitted such a bid at said time and place in the amount of $47,000, $47,254. And whereas the bidding specification contained language in Article 17.1, thereof giving the owner the right to waiver all informalities not involving price, time, or changes in the work, and whereas Lake Engineering Engineer for the town has reviewed the specifications of the project, so bid and compared the same to the bidding specification and has found only minor deviations from the bidding specifications by the low bidder, none of which involve price, time, or change in the work, which he recommends be waived. One, the bid check was not a certified check, and two, the low bidder did not indicate membership in an accredited post frame builders program. And three, the non collusive resolution did not include the date the meeting was held authorizing Bertley to submit the bid and non collusive certificate. And whereas the town board of the town of Sanford has determined that it is in the best interest of the town to waive said informalities and award the contract for the project to Bertley and Son Building an excavation LLC in the amount of $41,300. Now, therefore, be it resolved, pursuant to section 222 of the town law, that the supervisor of the town of Sanford be and is hereby authorized to enter into agreement with Bertley and Son Building in the amount of $41,300 to construct the salt storage barn in accordance with the build or bidding specifications. Any questions? Equipment and our manpower 
and uh, save the town considerable amount of money so we can get out to somebody, paying for million wage, so on and so forth. Uh, had to buy a transit, uh, which we could use for more than just that building there. We'll use it for pipe installation and things like that throughout the township. And if we ever have any kind of projects in the future, we'll actually have it on hand. So uh, by buying this that uh, one piece of equipment, we can save the town quite a bit of money by doing that. All the chips work is now completed. The roads have been chip sealed. Black topping is pretty well wrapped up for the season. Uh, working on roads with potholes at this time, it's some cold mix. Regrading a few roads where potholes are coming in. Cut shoulders, installing pipes, so on and so forth. Um, I met with uh, Tom Evans from Southern Tier East Regional Planning Development Board and talked about our roads and culverts and maps they made for us at the town at no charge, in which they need to be fixed. I was told there would be no charge for the township for them to fix the maps. Um, I went over the maps with him and he showed some of the roads uh, has even seen a car on them one day. For instance, uh, Loomis Hill. He said when he was driving, he didn't see one car on the road. So he put, uh, we're low priority of our roads. And I don't know if he's been over Loomis, uh, but there's more than one car day goes over that. So uh, I have to sit down with him again in the future. We're going to refix that map a little bit. Uh, for traffic counts, so on and so forth. Like I said, it's going to be at the no count charge to the township. And also, while they're out there, they're trying to do a little bit of an inventory of our culvert pipes for us, which is saving me quite a bit of time from going out after road to road. They're taking pictures, uh, they already have done that for us. So we have documentation. Uh, I knew we brought it up at the last meeting. Uh, so you guys have heads up that I did meet with him. I'm starting to put in place a program for ditching and brush cutting on our roads. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm trying to have the roads prep the year in advance for a chips program while they're doing ditching, cut shoulders, and install new pipes, and so on and so forth. So it'll be a year in advance a rotation thing. All right, uh, I have had no word yet from the state police on the sign issues. There's a few tires over to the shop that's been on the shelves for many, many years. Uh, I had our mechanic, Scott Bowie, call the tire company to see if they'll take them for trade-ins. Um, they said they've been there too long, they can't give us anything for them. And I just don't want to, you know, throw them out. So I feel, I don't know what the board feels about it, but um, I think we ought to just put them out to bid to the general public. You know, as is, where is. You know, right, responsibly go down, down the road and have pull out. But they're, most of them are brand new tires, you know, and they no longer fit our equipment that we have at the shop there. I don't know what you guys would like to do with them, but like I said, they're this there, and uh, I tried to use them as trade so you know, we get money off new tires, so they will not accept them. <clears throat> Seems like a good idea for the market that doesn't fit anywhere. They don't fit anything or any equipment at all. Like I said, I tried to do a trade in with a GCR tire, Talmadge tire. Nobody wants nothing to do with it. As long as it's not a liability issue for us, as far as someone having a blow up with one of them or something like that. Good question. They probably already a little dry rotted, maybe, or something? Or? Well, they're not dry rotted. They've just been on the shelf there in about, years. about three, four years at least. And so I would say maybe you want to put it out there as is where it is, um, so we're not going to be responsible for it. Or we can put in the, in, uh, the statement that we'll not be responsible. How many tires are there? Oh, there's got to be six to ten tires there. They're bigger truck tires. I don't see a lot of the town attorney doesn't think it's any problem or any uh, liable for anything. I don't see any problem at all putting out for it. What do you think, Bill? Hmm. There's no way the village or the town or the could use them. Hmm. I haven't talked to them, but I could talk to them, see if they have any interest in point. There's no sense them sitting on our shelf taking well, up the room. No, yeah. they're, like I said, they'd like to see something done with them. You know, so just sit there and look. That sounds like a good idea. Talk to their township to see if they have any interest in point. met with a gentleman by the name of James Wilmot from Williams about um, they're in the preliminary stages of a uh, possible 30-inch gas main going through the township. I don't know if you guys have heard anything about it. Uh, I basically pointed him into the way of our, the town's attorney to discuss that issue with him. 
All right, and um, I just have something for executive uh, session here with personnel, which I'd like to take in later on. Okay, Steve, so, you now was there an issue also with uh, repairs on that road? Which road is that? Where the greater uh, <coughs> <coughs> point <coughs> uh, Yes, which Allison has that she's going to bring up with her agenda. Okay. Very good. <coughs> you yep. all set? I'm all set. I think I skipped the dog. That's all can add again. <coughs> That's okay. It's pretty average mode. Uh, I got the dock out and it's all set up in the town of Ponds Garage. Uh, I haven't had any, had any Sanford dogs in it. I've had a couple of dogs from the town of Deposit in the last couple of days. I've had to put them in there. <coughs> and, uh, no problems with parking or anything. Uh, at the town of Deposit's board meeting tonight, they uh, discussed the uh, fee to charge for, for what I have to take somebody's dog in. Uh, Tommy's going to get a hold of you and discuss it more before. They, they made a decision to charge $20 a day for up to 48 hours that I have a dog in there. And after 48 hours, the dog will go to the pound. And if, if somebody claims the dog within 48 hours, they have to pay up to 20 bucks a day. And if the dog isn't licensed, they have to pay the license fee before they can have the dog back. And they're going to post after he speaks with you, and he's going to post it. Yeah, I talked with him, and uh, I think both towns should do exactly the same. And uh, he indicated that uh, he would gather the information and get back to me, and apparently that's what they're doing the <coughs> board meeting. Yeah. yeah. So that information will be coming next month. Yep. And that's another point. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, are we allowed to make a comment on that? I'm sure are. Is that out of curiosity? Sure. You might want to change it from 48 hours to 72, just in case there's a, a uh, three-day holiday that you pick up a dog. There is the possibility that the town will be closed and you have to keep them for the three days. Well, I mean, I have keys to them. I can take them to the pound any time. Yeah, the only thing with the, the 48 hours is just, I, I've got to go down there all the time while this dog is down there. Yeah, you know, I've got to be in and out of there all day long. So, you know, in 48 hours, I got to make a lot of trips down there during the day to, to take care of it. And generally, if Somebody doesn't claim their dog is missing within 48 hours. They're not gonna pick it up. I mean, I've, I've held on to some people's dogs and held on to them for a week, and nobody showed up. And you know, you can, I can take it over to the town, and I mean, they can also go over there, and it's about the same price to, to get your dog over there. It's just more of a trying to be more of a convenience for the, the town residents to be able to get them here than have to go to Sydney and get them. Yeah, I was just worried about the holiday weekend and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you've got keys to put the dog in, then I don't see any problem. Is twenty dollars going to be enough, or or to really? Cut? I mean, I mean, have to pay you to go down there to take care of the dog two, three times a day. Well, I, I mean, don't know. Twenty dollars enough? Somebody's going to let their dog run loose and get picked up? Maybe they ought to charge a little more. Than what's the local? What, what's like the local kennels? charge and stuff. I'm not sure what they charge, but like over at Sydney, they charge $15 a day. But I mean, it's not going to be all the time. I mean, I might get one or two dogs a month that I got to take over there. But like lately, nobody's claimed them, so we would have got no revenue from that anyways. So. Okay. As long as you're happy with it, you think it'll work. You're out there every day, not me. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, no, that is okay. <clears throat> okay, so code enforcement officer submitted a report for August 2012, and also the dog control officer report, uh, submitted a report. Um, the board needs to schedule a budget budget workshop session. Um, sometime next month. 
Last year, about the seventh of it. Yes. It was <coughs> Friday. What day of the work? Day of the week? I'm good just about anything. Anything but a Tuesday for me usually works. Okay. I work on a Tuesday day. What's the rest of Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. <coughs> Wednesday or Thursday. Past that time. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> now you're passing somebody can't see. Okay. Well, Sorry, I tried. It's October 10th. It is just as blank as it can be. You better read it down. Do you want me to get a calendar? October 10th. 10th? Mm -hmm. that, that's why it's a Wednesday. Wednesday? That's a Wednesday, yes. Does that sound all right? No. What that's time? 7? 7 o'clock? Carrie Hartz um, as Board of Assessment Review Member for a five-year term beginning October 1st, 2012 through September 30th, 2017. We need a motion on that. Motion approved. Second. Second. a resolution to authorize application for a grant by the Town of Sanford Justice Court. Yeah, there was a moving company, there was actually the owner, the new owner of the machine, and the owner's friend was involved here. Basically, this uh, resolution here that the attorney has wrote has 
states here he has went to the, the trucking company in the new owner of the machine and wrote them certified mail letters, received confirmation back from them. The only one that did uh, respond to the mail was uh, the transportation company itself, which stated they had no part uh, in doing the damage to the road itself. And uh, the new owner, when I spoke to him, he expressed to me that he would take care of any damages that were done to the road. And uh, I haven't heard anything personally. And our attorney, like I said, has road certified letters and he has not heard anything. And it's been about a month and a half at this point. Now the, the owner basically committed to you that he was going to take care of it? He told me he was going to take care of it, yes. But at this point, uh, we have quite a few photos of the road while the machine was still sitting in the road with the damage done to the road. And, uh, I don't know where you guys want to take it from here. <clears throat> I think that indicates that the cost per hour is about 195. Unless you guys, you know, like I said, it's, I don't know, personally, I don't feel it's right for the taxpayers out there to have to absorb the cost of fixing the road with our own personal tax dollars, which we didn't cause the damage. Uh, the person that caused it should be responsible for fixing it. But then again, on the other hand, we go back and I don't know how long it's going to take this attorney to fund this claim. So we got to, I guess, wait it out. You know, if he gets, you know, 10 hours in there. Had a couple thousand dollars already wrapped up into the case. I would say probably if we had to go fix it personally, uh, <coughs> to pay for value wage or anything, I'm gonna probably estimate that out there to be about two thousand dollars for the township to have to pay out of pocket without paying the value wage and getting the uh, blacktop stuff at state bid. Did you send them a bill yet? Oh, yeah, they got all the letters from the attorney and everything. The, the attorney sent them a bill? For I'm assuming 10000 Yeah, he's had all the bills there. They had three estimates from contractors, local contractors, and also out of Bampton. They didn't reply to anything? No. The only one that did reply was the trucking outfit, which stated that they were responsible for it. <clears throat> so I don't know how you guys are going to run over $2,000 in attorney fees on this? I think we should, in my opinion, I think we should start <clears throat> the process and see where it goes. And um, I believe, I believe that I don't, that from the way you indicated, the owner was definitely committed to that's what he stated to myself, yes. He would take care of any damages that were done. But like I said, I have not heard anything. Uh, like I, I did state to him, I did take pictures of what has happened out there. So I do have documentation of everything. Uh, state police have been reported. It was there a uh, report on it also. Let me go ahead and let the attorney do what he's going to do when we're reviewing next month's meeting. Very good idea. And we'll see where we're at, how we are. You guys want to put a cap on it, maybe, you know, at an extent? Like I said, I don't know. I just review it at the next meeting. He's not going to have that much time. He's probably going to send him a letter stating that we're going to take action, and that might make him take action mm -hmm. and get resolved fairly quick. So. <clears throat> Motion to approve that we allow this Blaze, Oliver Blaze attorney from Kaufman Gerhardt to start litigation procedures with them. Your second? I'll second. I'll second that. Uh, roll, roll, roll. Dewey A. Decker? Aye. David L. Martin? Aye. David T. Sexton? Aye. Kevin J. McKee? Aye. Okay, thank you. And that's all I have.
I do believe we have some information in, in reference to the grant. I believe Jerry will have asked for a week extension. Yes, he did. You're right. Um, I believe there's draw number 14, which we're waiting on, and then there's going to be one more draw, which is 15, should be the last to go through. And I believe that was to do with the trailer um, body March. I believe so. And then uh, that would complete the grant. <clears throat> the only other thing I have, I did receive a, um, a copy of a petition that was sent to Broome County from Fargo Lake in reference to the county highway department. Uh, if anybody would like to see this petition, it, uh, Go over. It, um, it's just for information. It's not a petition against the uh, town of Stanford. It's a petition from the Fargo Lake that was presented to the uh, uh, Broome County Highway Department. Regards to roads. Excuse me? Is it in regards to the roads at the lake? Yes. <clears throat> Looks like most of the road there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like yeah, the shoulders. See if the guy is up to the lake or which part of the park. It looks like the uh, part that you go up uh, here, leaving town by Shambax or that. Okay. On the other side of Highway Ridge. Yeah. I did see, I was heading up that way the other day, the county was actually working on some of the shoulder work up through there. So yeah. I'm assuming they must have received this complaint or whatever. What do you think they uh, I think they have there? started with action there. Yeah, they, they've done some work on this yeah. end of the labor. Mm -hmm. I think we have problems that I'd like to brought to my attention, though, in the township personally. And if you guys have any problems with your roads, please bring it to my attention. Thank you. 
I have is what anybody on the board have any? Yeah, one thing. I know we I discussed at a previous board meeting about our <coughs> timekeeping system mm -hmm. as far as uh, right now JD and Summer do an exorbitant amount of paperwork to conduct our time entry and for payroll and all those things. So the board had asked me to look into a timekeeping system and I set up an online seminar with JD, Summer, and myself. A lot of companies, a lot of municipalities do this. It's rather than paying a payroll company to do things, it's an online timekeeping system. Uh, small municipalities use it all the way up to companies like McDonald's uses it. Uh, what it'll be is we've set up three computers at the Town Highway Garage that are now in service, all three are online. This will be for wage employees. <clears throat> and all it is is uh, you will come in, you will put your username and password in on the computer and you will enter that you're starting your shift. It will have the same thing with your ending of your shift. Each employee will be able to pull up all their accruals of vacation, sick time, personal time, everything on the computer. They won't have to come in and go through miles of paperwork to keep track of things. Uh, also, this is going to make summer's job instead of a half day down to more like a 15 minute job. Uh, we will also be able to time code certain jobs. So if our men are on FEMA projects, things like that, they will be able to go in and say start of shift, I am going on 0001, which is a FEMA project, or 0002, which is a something in the garage, if you work in the garage that day, which will give us a better time tracking system to, you know how hard it is when FEMA wants to know exactly how many hours you've had on a project. And you have to document that very well. So this will help as far as that goes, too. Uh, that's basically where I'm at. I have a quote that I can show everybody. It works out to basically $4 per month per employee. And with the wage employees we have at the town, the wage employees that we have here, it's going to be basically about $44 a month this is going to cost us. For $44 a month, we're going to save a large amount of money in the time that JD and Summer spend on payroll. Uh, not only for the town employees, the highway employees, but the employees here as well. And uh, it's something I would like the board to give approval on. Not that we're going to start this right away. I want to leave. Summer has been doing this. I set up a 30-day trial so she can learn to use this online. And I think she probably needs a little more time on it. But I'd like the board to give approval to start this upon Summer's, when Summer is comfortable with it, I'm thinking like October 1st. Whatever, whatever, whatever date starts the beginning of a pay period, I'd like to start at a Sunday at 12.01 a.m. is when we would kick it into effect. But I'd like Summer to be comfortable with it before we just jump right into it. So I'm thinking another two, three weeks, use your 30-day free trial, let her get used to it, and uh, we would go live then. <coughs> Basically, there would be an icon on the desktop that the employee would click on, enter their username and password, start a shift. They can submit their vacations on it. It would send an email directly to whoever their supervisor is, personal time, sick time, they can apply for all that online and they can review it online too. When they, someone says, I told you I need a vacation that day, it's, did he say, did he not say? It's all right there, the computer's not going to lie. And it'll just make everything a lot easier as far as the paperwork goes. So if the board is comfortable with it, uh, it's $44 a month. There is also, just so you know, with any online timekeeping system like this or any online service you get, if you need online help, in other words, you really messed it up and they got to come in and fix it up, it's $225 an hour, which is, which is standard in, in today. <coughs> I went through the whole system, I sat in on the seminar, it's not that hard. I'd say within the month, you guys are going to have it down, it's really JD and Summer would be at management control. 
they would be able to go in and alter things. The employee forgot to clock in, forgot to clock out, they would be able to go in and alter. The employee's end of it is very simple. It's, it can't get much simpler than that. It's basically just, I started the day, I ended the day. If they want to submit for time off, they submit for time off. They can go in and review their time at any time. It's really JD and Summer who are going to have the, uh, the learning curve. But it's really, you, did you think it was that bad? I thought it was a great uh, system, it really was. You know, like I said, the employees, they can go put their time in, uh, they want to put their time in a year in advance, you know? They can go in the computer, put their time in a year in advance, whatever they want to do, they can send it to myself or Summer, this way it's been documented. Uh, if there's any questions, you can shoot them an email back. Uh, if I have something for all, for instance, the town guys, uh, if I have a widespread memo for them, something come up and we need to take care of something, I can send it right out so when they clock in, it's right there in front of them. Uh, when they clock out, it's right there. And then again, uh, these guys don't know exactly how many hours they'll have through the whole year. When they clock in, it tells exactly what time they have remaining, the time that they carried over. And uh, when we spoke to the gentleman on the phone, I asked him about security with these kind of systems, and 100% security said, uh, he also stated that they have over 4 million employees using this system today. And they will be the caretaker of it. In other words, if our system crashed, our computers crashed, it will be backed up. It's all backed up in their database. We can't lose any information. Uh, a lot of people do this anymore. It's just a, it's an easier way to track your time and money for the employee and for the manager. And that would be for the whole township, just not have the firm. That would be also the rest of the All wage and various to this family. Okay, so what basically, if I understand it right, if there's a 30 day free trial, going free on. trial, so that if at the end of 30 days you're not comfortable with it, uh, you don't have to take it. Back. And we can also drop it at any time. There's no contract on this. Oh, okay. We can try it for three months. We don't like it. You drop it. There is no contract at all. You know, I think it's something we need to get in fairly soon. It just I I see the absorbent amount of time they spent on payroll. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we make a motion to proceed with this program. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Second. No problem with that. Um, do we need Decker? Aye. David O. Martin. Aye. David Payne Sexton, Kevin James Key. Aye. Did you say that you had some people going to the session? Yes. I see Mr. Scott is, or Baker is here tonight. Did you want to, want to say something or, or just want to attend? Yeah, well, I probably should at least introduce myself, right? I'm Scott Baker, I'm <coughs> the Hope County Legislator. I'll be covering the town of Sanford, the town of Windsor, and the town of Kirkwood. I am running against Steve Hurst, who currently has that position. And uh, I just wanted to pop out here and you know, show my face and, and uh, see what you guys are doing out here in the town tonight. If you have any questions, I'll stick around for a little bit afterward. Okay? Now oh, oh, this is to do with later. Personal issues. Personal. Personnel. Okay, so we'll, <clears throat> we'll go into executive session. We'll do the personnel. I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. Can somebody explain why the cell phone towers need, the law needs to be changed? Excuse me, I can hear you. Why the cell phone towers, what, what's wrong with the laws for them and why they need to be changed? Because everybody's Basically, in the dark about that. What is going on with the cell towers? Really what it is is the uh, cell towers are, um, the, the town is not going to be able to put any regulations on. Uh, they're not going to be public hearing uh, in reference to upgrades on the existing towers. That, um, so that's what the law change is going to be, you're saying? Excuse me? That's what the law change is going to be. Yeah. It, um, okay. 
it's uh, they're not going to have to go through all the procedures. Okay. It's really when they when when they come in and they want to upgrade their cell towers, uh, take dishes off, put dishes on, uh, upgrade it. That they're not going to have to go through the public hearing. It's. Um, well, they only have to do that once, right? When they go through 4G, I imagine they they make one petition for all their towers, right? Is that how it works? I don't know. No. But, um, when they, you mean when they want to set up a tower? Well, they have the towers and they want to put new antennas on or new equipment on. Isn't that? That's, that's what this is. Okay. This is to do with. Yeah. Okay. This, you read that, didn't you? But, um, it, it wasn't clearly explained. Would you mind reading so he can understand that? Is that kind of long, but is that the just, just, the part, just the part that um, the only thing you need to read is just the part there that that first paragraph right there. The section one three zero one purpose and legislative intent. That one. It, uh, Sounds good. Uh, the town of Sanford Land Use Management Local Law Article 13, citing of wireless telecommunications facilities, being hereby as amended by this local law as follows. <coughs> is hereby amended to add the following paragraphs at the first paragraph of this section to provide as follows. Uh, am I reading the right part? Sounds good. Because <laughs> I don't think that was in the minutes of the previous meeting, the actual law changed the wording. <coughs> I think the part that's important here is that the uh, local government may not deny and shall approve any request relating to an eligible facility for a modification of an existing wireless tower or base station that does not substantially change the physical dimension of such tower or base station. It has to do with a uh, full location of new transmission equipment, removal of transmission equipment, or replacement of transmission equipment. Okay, so I could obtain that through a foil, but I didn't see that in the minutes of the last meeting. It's, I was confused. I think this was the meeting before that. Wasn't it? No, I think it was. It was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, that'd be June, right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.